You're just as sane as I am. In popular culture, the Ravenclaw identity tends to get summed up with one word, smart. But Ravenclaws aren't the only smart characters we meet in Harry Potter. And they don't even always come across as clever in an obvious way. Very clearly, the bones are not broken. Broken? There's no bones left! So if Ravenclaw is the house of wisdom, wit, and learning, what is the story telling us about what it really means to be smart? Together we shall cast ourselves into the future! Ravenclaw teaches us that being a true intellectual means being a nonconformist. It's thinking in an alternative way, getting deep, and being willing to follow your mind wherever it leads. You could say that this house represents what reading and watching Harry Potter is all about, expanding your mind to consider things other people would find outlandish so that you can discover a whole new magical world. What's a rock spot? They're invisible creatures. They float in your ears and make your brain go fuzzy. So now let's explore what it takes to think like a Ravenclaw. Before we go on, we want to talk a little about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a superb online learning community with thousands of classes about everything. Vlogging, cinematography, even painting with watercolors. Click the link in the description below to get two months access to all classes for free. In the first book, The Sorting Hat tells us, or yet in wise old raven claw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. When we think of Ravenclaw in the abstract, the image that comes to mind is brainy, studious, exacting. Pretty much Hermione Granger. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. But Hermione is not a Ravenclaw. While she's unmatched in cleverness and studiousness, she doesn't have that Ravenclaw drive to break down traditional thought categories. From the first moment you stepped foot in my class, I sensed that you did not possess the proper spirit for the noble art of divination. Hermione will get perfect marks in every Hogwarts class from arithmancy to transfiguration. But Luna will question why Hogwarts doesn't offer a class on Nargles. It keeps away the Nargles. What's a Nargle? No idea. Rowling has even said that Luna is, quote, the anti-Hermione. Rowling wrote, Hermione is so logical and inflexible in so many ways, and Luna is likely to believe ten impossible things before breakfast. Unfortunately, all my shoes have mysteriously disappeared. I suspect Nargles are behind it. So, in fact, the common perception of Ravenclaws is pretty much all wrong. The Ravenclaws we actually get to know in the story, like Luna Lovegood, Cho Chang, Gilderoy Lockhart, Moaning Myrtle, and Professors Trelawney and Quirrell, don't strike us as lacking intelligence. But the first adjectives we might use to describe them would probably be more like imaginative, original, odd, or quirky. Maybe even a little moony. I was just sitting in the U bend thinking about death. So what is J.K. Rowling getting at by telling us that wise old Ravenclaw is the house of wit and learning, only to draw us a portrait of a wacky group of oddballs? I've interrupted the deep thought, haven't I? I can see it growing smaller in your eyes. Rowling's depiction of Ravenclaw suggests that the smartest people are truly open-minded, the ones who go beyond the usual boundaries of categories and assumptions we take for granted. Thus, the philosophy of Ravenclaw is to think outside the box. My mom always said, the things we lose have a way of coming back to us in the end. If not always in the way we expect. Luna's style of learning will go underappreciated in most structured educational or professional environments. But a Ravenclaw's first priority is to get at the truth underneath surface appearances. The truth lies buried like a sentence deep within a book waiting to be read. So it doesn't really matter to them if others don't get it. And the story suggests that to be a truly sophisticated thinker, you have to be okay with the fact that others may perceive you as a bit of a weirdo. Everyone, this is Looney Love... Luna Lovegood. Luna is linked to the magical creatures, Thestrals. They're quite gentle, really, but people avoid them because 
therapy. Different. Like them, she's a sweetheart, but it takes a deeper person to recognize how great she really is. The complex Ravenclaw identity reveals that very intelligent people may often be underappreciated, because it takes high intelligence just to recognize intelligence. Well, if I were you-know-who, I'd want you to feel cut off from everyone else. Professor Trelawney is another example of alternative thinking. First, you must broaden your minds. First, you must look beyond. Many dismiss her subject, divination, as the magical equivalent of pseudoscience. If you ask me, divination's a very woolly discipline. But when it comes down to it, she makes crucial prophecies. Innocent blood shall be spilt, and servant and master shall be reunited once more. Or look at the wand maker, Garrick Ollivander. He's intimately connected to his craft and sees deeply into his subject, not worrying if this makes him appear odd to the casual observer. You talk about wands as if they have feelings. Can think. The wand chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter. Professor Phileas Flitwick, the head of Ravenclaw House, also captures the spirit of the house in the subject he teaches, charms. Charms don't change the essence of an object, they just make it do something new or take on a new property. Ravenclaws put a new spin on things, offer a fresh approach, and show dexterity in processing a wide variety of elements. Don't you remember what Chow said about Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem? There's not a person alive who's seen it. It's obvious, isn't it? We have to talk to someone who's dead. Most students at Hogwarts are out to learn things for another end goal, like good grades or a career. But Ravenclaws possess intellectual depth and curiosity beyond this utilitarian approach to knowledge. They value wisdom for its own sake, not as a means, but as an end. Wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure. Now, let's look outside the Harry Potter world for some deep-thinking Ravenclaws. First up, Shuri from Black Panther. Why didn't you just reprogram the synapses to work collectively? Because we didn't think of it. She's amazingly innovative, and she's driven by a passion for her subject. How many times do I have to teach you? Just because something works doesn't mean that it cannot be improved. Phoebe Buffay on Friends would be a Ravenclaw. Everyone's favorite oddball with a heart of gold is basically a grown-up version of Luna Lovegood. Because at that time, you see, I thought that everything that rhymed was true. Like other Ravenclaws, Phoebe tends to get written off as a head-in-the-clouds hippie, but she's actually a few steps ahead of the crowd. I like to think of myself as the puppet master of the group. <laughs> on Game of Thrones, Bran Stark would be a Ravenclaw. Sometimes in my dreams of it. Three-eyed raven. The raven brings the sight. His physical capacity to move is limited, but mentally he goes places no one else can, like the past and future. It means I can see everything. Everything that's ever happened to everyone. Everything that's happening right now. The maesters in Game of Thrones would be textbook examples of Ravenclaws because they value the preservation of knowledge and truth above all else, even if that means staying out of a war that could end all humanity. They set me to the task of preserving that man's wind accounting and annulments and bowel movements for all eternity, while the secret to defeating the Night King is probably sitting on some dusty shelf somewhere completely ignored. Yeah. A darker example of a Ravenclaw might be Walter White on Breaking Bad. Chemistry is the study of matter, but I prefer to see it as the study of change. Walt is obsessed with his own intelligence, and intelligence is pretty much the main thing he respects in others. And more than that, I respect the strategy. As he strives to prove his genius through his Heisenberg empire, he allows everything else in his life to be destroyed, showing the dangers of not balancing intellectual drive with other values. My wife is waiting for me to die. This business is all I have left now. Back to the Future's Doc would be a Ravenclaw. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint. He's a classic mad scientist type, a brilliant inventor who's wonderfully weird. I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink, and when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision. And of course, there's Rick and Morty's resident genius who takes some inspiration from Doc. Sometimes science is more art than science, Morty. Yes, Rick is a bit of a mess, 
but some of what makes Rick seem like a terrible guy stems from his seeing a lot more about our universe, and many other universes, than regular Earthbound citizens could begin to fathom. When you know nothing matters, the universe is yours, and I've never met a universe that was into it. In real life, the greatest geniuses of all time have been known for their quirks. Take Albert Einstein, Beethoven, or Walt Disney. These were mavericks who changed history with their different way of thinking. Creative musicians like David Bowie, Lady Gaga, or Janelle Monet might be in Ravenclaw too. These artists go their own way, following a vision only they can see, and their personas can be pretty outlandish as a result. Finally, J.K. Rowling herself has sorted Stephen Colbert into Ravenclaw. She wrote, Dear Stevie, definitely Ravenclaw, but with Gryffindor undertones. Boom, there it is. Ravenclaw's house colors are blue and bronze. Blue is associated with clarity, serenity, and calm, exactly the kind of mind state you want to be in for clear thinking and lucidity. Expressions like out of the blue, a bolt from the blue, or once in a blue moon all describe a sudden or rare event. In the same way, Ravenclaws are unique and unusual. Blue is a cold, reflective color, and Ravenclaws in their fascination with knowledge can sometimes feel a little detached, lacking in human warmth. Intelligence itself doesn't have a moral alignment. It can be used for good or bad, and some morally suspect or amoral Ravenclaws prove this point. You've just been taking credit for what other wizards have done. I'm rather gifted with memory charms. Otherwise, you see, all those wizards would have gone blabbing. The first two stories both featured devious Ravenclaw professors. Who would suspect b -b 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 poor st -st -st stuttering Professor Quirrell? Blue is also associated with prestige, as with a blue ribbon or blue-blooded people of noble birth. And the Ravenclaws who go astray tend to be driven by a desire for greatness and glory. Can you possibly imagine a better way to serve detention and by helping me to answer my fan mail. Our most common modern association with bronze is the third place medal. Not as good as Gryffindor's gold or Slytherin's silver, but this speaks to the way that Ravenclaw's form of intelligence isn't always as obvious or appreciated in a structured contest. The Bronze Age was defined by big technological strides forward, like the transition from stone to bronze tools and the invention of the wheel. Likewise, Ravenclaws are innovators ahead of the curve. Ravenclaw is linked to the element air. In astrology, air signs are known as being curious, intelligent, and cerebral. They're also known as excellent communicators. Come, Daddy. Harry doesn't want to talk to us right now. He's just too polite to say so. In Hinduism and Buddhism, air is associated with the heart chakra, which is linked to transformation and change, as well as love and relationships. While Ravenclaws might not have the most smooth social skills on the surface, we see in some of them an emotional intelligence. After Cedric's death, Cho Chang insists on dealing with her emotional fallout. Cho spends half her time crying these days. She won't just forget Cedric and brush her grief under the rug. It's just, it's just learning all this. Makes me wonder whether if he'd known it. Cho's approach shows maturity for her age. Ravenclaw's house animal is the noble eagle. Eagles fly in the air, Ravenclaw's house element. They like flying on their own, often at a high altitude. This reflects Ravenclaw's independent spirit and commitment to going your own way. Eagles are considered the kings of the bird world. In Greek mythology, the eagle is connected to Zeus, the king of the gods, who used an eagle as his personal messenger. We can see in Ravenclaws this majestic, self-possessed nature and regal bearing. They don't feel they have to prove themselves because they have an innate sense of worth. And of course, the eagle is the national animal of the US, representing the country's central ideal of freedom. In the same way, you could say that there's nothing that matters more to a Ravenclaw than being free. Free to learn, free to develop, and free to be unabashedly themselves. The house's name itself also alludes to another bird, the raven. Ravens are incredibly intelligent animals who recognize individual human faces, mimic human speech, and hold grudges. Ravens are also extremely playful, but they have connotations with darkness and death. Ravenclaws embody this same balance of smarts, playfulness, and sometimes an unsettling or amoral side. 
You first, Mr. Potter. Say goodbye to your memories. The door to Ravenclaw Tower only opens once you answer a riddle posed by the bronze eagle-shaped door knocker. In the book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Luna explains to Harry that if you don't get the answer to the riddle right, you have to wait to go in with someone who does. So Ravenclaws are forced to learn, even just to get into their own common room. The Ravenclaw Tower is high up, and its airy common room is filled with bookcases topped by a domed ceiling painted with stars. Likewise, Ravenclaws are up in the clouds, detached from practical or low-minded earthly pursuits. The space's feeling of openness reflects the house's values like high-mindedness and free thought. Ravenclaw's name comes from Rowena Ravenclaw, one of the four founders of Hogwarts. She was known for her brilliance, creativity, and beauty, and she set the bar for Ravenclaw House's commitment to learning. Her diadem reads, Wit beyond measure is man's greatest treasure. And in the Order of the Phoenix book, the Sorting Hat describes her teaching philosophy this way. Said Ravenclaw will teach those whose intelligence is surest. Many believe that it was Rowena Ravenclaw who came up with the location and name for Hogwarts. What we know for sure is that she came up with Hogwarts's ever-shifting floor plan. And this plan seems to embody the Ravenclaw thinking process. Complex, creative, ever-shifting. Rowena's daughter Helena becomes Ravenclaw's ghost, the Grey Lady. If you have to ask, you'll never know. If you know, you need only ask. When Helena was still alive, she stole her mother's diadem to make herself smarter. This is a reminder of how Ravenclaw's thirst for knowledge or glory can turn into a fatal flaw if it's not tethered to a moral compass. In the Harry Potter world, Ravenclaws expand our understanding of what it means to be intelligent. It's daring to venture into strange territory and to look deeply at the world, forgetting what others take for granted. We could all benefit from learning to think like a Ravenclaw. Why not let a little magical thinking transform our muggle world into a far more mysterious place? Never been to this part of the castle. At least not while awake. This is Young Guru. Young Guru is a Grammy-nominated music engineer, producer, and DJ who has worked with big names like Jay-Z and Beyonce. And he teaches a class on how to mix music on Skillshare. I like to start with the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, then I'll add all the percussive stuff and then end with the overheads. This allows me to visually see what's going on inside of the session and keep everything organized. This is why we love Skillshare service. The classes are taught by amazing, accomplished working professionals in design, photography, social media, business, entrepreneurship, and more. In fact, Skillshare has actually helped us at Screen Prism learn more about animation and design. They offer 20,000 classes about any skill you might want to learn, all for less than $10 a month. Right now, you can get two months access to all their classes for free, but that's only if you're one of the first 500 people to click the link in our description below. It's a great deal, so hurry up and don't miss out.